This After Effects tutorial is sponsored by Storyblocks.com. In this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create a pretty dope looking audio visualizer inside of After Effects without using any plugins. Now, you can use this cool animation not only as an audio visualizer, but also as a background and use it in various different scenarios. So without any further ado, let's jump into After Effects and let's see how to create this. All right, so here we are in After Effects. Let's start by creating a new composition, which is going to be 1920, 1080 full HD, 30 FPS and 10 seconds long. Let's call this render as our main render comp. Hit OK. Let's create one more comp that is going to be the fractal design that you saw in the background. So I'm going to call this um, lines. Hit OK let's hit ctrl y to create a new solid and call this a fractal and then go into effects and preset type in fractal noise and you can just drag and drop it or double click it to apply this onto this particular layer or solid and then i'm going to change the noise type from soft linear to linear increase the contrast up by 350 and bring down the brightness down by around minus 100 all right then change the overflow from allow hdr results to clip and then go into transform option unlink the uniform scaling so we can control the scale width and height individually i'm going to bring down the scale width to around three and increase the scale height by 300 so we get this really cool line setup and we need to bring down the complexity by one so we get this linear look and it looks a pretty cool now let's go ahead and animate the evolution in order to keep it animating so i'm gonna hold alt and click on the stopwatch and let's type in a simple expression that is time times 100 so it's gonna keep on animating like so then i'm gonna select the layer go into fix and preset and use a fast box blur change the blur dimension to vertical repeat edge pixels and let's increase the blur radius really high by around 100 and now we are getting the result that we are looking for but it's still quite not there yet we need to add some more detail into our texture or our design so i'll go into effects and preset and let's use a really cool effect called mosaic double click to apply that up let's turn on sharp colors and increase the horizontal blocks to around 250 and vertical blocks to 200 so we get a little uh, variation into our complete scene if you can see before and after we get some separation basically now right now every line is connected to each other so i want to add a little bit of more separation by adding some grid into this and in order to do that i'm going to go into effects and preset and of course use grid double click to apply it now in order to see this let's change the blending mode to a screen all right and let's change the size from center point to with height and sliders bring down the borders to around four and then bring down the width to 9.6 and then bring down the height or increase the height to 1300 so it's out of the frame so you get this kind of lines as you can see we can move this if we want to just like so and change the color to black and let's change the blending mode from screen to actually let's go with multiply so we get this really nice detail as you can see maybe i'll increase this to or bring that down to nine so we get this really nice look as you can see before and after we get this nice separation into our lines and this is looking pretty cool 
Now let's go back into our main random comp, drag and drop in our lines composition just like so. And I'm going to turn on title action save in order to create that shape that I want. So I'm going to select the pen tool. I'll click right here, one here, one here, one here, and uh, one more right here to close this up. So we get this really nice shape. Now let's switch to convert vertex tool. And then I'm going to click just like that and then hold shift, but first of all, drag this and then hold shift. So it's going to snap in like that and let's create a shape like that. Same thing for this one. I'm going to click, drag it and hold shift, drag it and hold shift. And this one as well. Pretty cool. And then let's increase the feather. So I'm going to hit F and let's increase the feather to around 500. Let's see how it looks. Looking um, pretty good. I think 500 is, is a bit too much. Let's bring that down. Let's go with something like 350 or something. Let's start here. All right. And now one of the most important thing that we need to do is switch from eight bits to 32 bits. So I'm going to hold Alt and click on this. And now we are in 32 bits. Now the reason that I switched to 32 bits in order to get better glows. So let's do that. Let's hit control Y to create a new solid called this PG for background. Hit OK, drag that below. Now in order to punch up the lines, because right now it's barely visible. So to do that, I'm going to use curves, double click, and let's drag this point like so. So now you can see the lines are much more visible. I can just duplicate this, hit control D to make it a bit more intense like that. And then I will use a CC toner in order to color the lines. So I'm gonna double click to apply that up. And for the highlights, I'll go with a nice yellow. For the mid tones, I'll go with a heavy orange. And let's keep the shadows to black. So now we have this really nice look. Now let's create a new adjustment layer called this glow. And let's add some glows to this. So I'm going to go into effects and preset, type in glow, double click to apply that up. Let's increase the glow radius to 150. And uh, let's increase the glow intensity as well, a little bit like so. Then I'm going to hit control D to duplicate the glow and let's increase the glow radius this time really high, like 750 or something in order to create a very intense look. Let's increase the glow intensity and bring down the threshold a little. Again, I can select this and maybe I'll bring down the feather amount a, little, a bit down like something like this. Let's go back and um, play around with the glow a little bit in order to fix this. Yeah, that is what I am looking for. Now let's create one more adjustment layer. And now in order to get rid of the color bendings, I'm going to use some noise as well. So let's go into effects and preset and type in noise. Let's double click to add some noise right here, maybe around 3%. And also really quickly, I'm going to do a curves adjustment and bring up the blues. First of all, let's increase the contrast a little bit and then switch to blue channel and let's bring the, bring this point up like so. Not that intense, just a little bit like that. So, so we get a really interesting look as you can see. And the best part about this design is you can anytime change the mask layer and create a different shape. So we get this really nice look. You can also use this as an audio visualizer. So, you know, I can add some text. So let's say I'm using something like Nixa bold and type in, um, good times. And let's change the font to something like integral. You know, let's align this into the center, bring down the size a little bit and maybe use this as an audio visualizer, make the audio react to this. Now, before we proceed further with this tutorial, let me tell you about today's sponsor Storyblocks. As an editor, how much time have you wasted looking for that perfect video clip? 
or maybe that perfect music for your videos or a simple graphic animation. As an editor, don't you wish there was a simple and affordable way to find the clips and graphics for your projects? What if I told you there is? There is Storyblocks. Storyblocks offers thousands of studio quality and royalty free stock video clips, After Effects templates, motion graphics backgrounds, intros and so much more. Everything is royalty free so you can use it for your commercial projects or for your old YouTube videos which is super awesome. Storyblocks offers affordable subscription plans that scale to meet your needs and a new video editing tool called Maker. I use Storyblocks myself for my client projects because with their unlimited all access plan, I can download unlimited assets and use Maker and I only have to pay a single price per year. So go ahead and check out storyblocks.com slash dope motions or click the first link in the description below. So now our animation is ready. Let's take a look at how to make it audio reactive. So to do that, I'm going to drag and drop in my music that I want to use. Select the music layer, right click, then go into keyframe assistant and convert audio to keyframes. So now we have a new layer right over here. I can hit U. So we get left channel, right channel and both channels. Now I'm not going to go too deep in how to make the audio react and you know what frequencies to use because that will be a very long video and there are already many tutorials explaining how audio reacts and you know in more detail. So for now I'm going to delete the left and right channel. I'm going to delete that. And there we have our slider. Now, if I select the slider and go into my graph editor, we can see we have this beats, high beats or high units at 49, right? Now let's select our, now let's select our line composition. Those are the background lines. Hit S and then let's close the graph editor for now. So I'm gonna hold Alt and click on the stopwatch of the scale property. Let's Pattern this to the slider or link this to the slider and then here in the expression panel I'm gonna type in plus let's press open square bracket and type in hundred comma hundred and then click out and now there we go now our animation is reacting to the audio basically Now I can change a few settings like I can change the width. I can tweak this and set this to 200 probably and you will get a really different and cool look and it will react to the audio as well. Now because this is 32 bits, it's going to be a bit more heavy on the system, but you can switch to 8 bits or 16 bits if you want to, but the glows won't be that prominent. So I prefer working in 32 bits for the glows and you know make it basically react to the audio now if you don't want them to react to the audio that is absolutely fine uh, what i prefer is if i let's get rid of this and what i usually do is hit s on the text and make the text react to that particular audio that way it is much more effective and looks much more cooler so again i will change the temp to 100 and change this temp to 100 as well and now so that is how you can create a very cool audio visualizer inside of after effects using fractal noise and some simple basic methods i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did make sure you hit that like button and let's aim for 500 likes on this particular video i know we can make this possible absolutely and if you're watching my video for the very first time make sure you hit that subscribe button and press that bell icon so you always get notified whenever i post a new video with that said i am nikhil pawar from dope motions and i will see you in the next video till then take care and always stay raw stay creative peace out